<laughs> All right, so whilst you guys drink your water, um, hello and welcome to In Conversation with uh, me, Juliet Biwa. And yesterday, saw Clifford Abuati joining us on Instagram for a very insightful conversation. But today, we are doing a triple treat of two men and one woman. Joseph Atama Lawe joins us from Turkey. Um, Richmond Bwachi Yadom is joining us from Serbia. I'm sure Richmond and Atama, they need no introduction there. Um, as well as Priscilla um, Edubia. Priscilla corrected me that her name is not Priscilla, it's Priscilla. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so the two men, one woman, plus myself, of course, <laughs> joining me here on In Conversation with them. Um, so thank you very much, guys, for joining me um, here. Thank you very much, Madam Juliet. <laughs> thank you very much. And um, let's go and have a, a bit of conversation. So these are questions I'm going to be asking all of you. So I don't know who is going to um, take it first. So let's see. I, Atama, who cared it as an Atama has gone off. We'll, we'll, bring, we'll bring him yeah, back, yeah. don't worry. We'll bring him back, but yeah. let's start. Oh. Let me start the conversation like with you. <laughs> with you, Richard. How are you guys okay. doing, first of all? And how are you dealing with um, no active football? Let me start with you, Richard. Well, Richard, first of all, we, I, I, would like, I would like to thank God for his guidance and protection because, you know, this pandemic has not been an easy thing. And uh, if we are lucky to be part of those who are living healthy, then we think God has done enough. So for me, our first time God for all that he has been doing for everybody now. Okay, so um, Joseph is joining us. He's trying to sort he's trying to sort his stream out. And um it will be the same question for you. How are you guys coping and dealing with no football activity? How is it like? First of all, um thank you very much for giving me this um, opportunity um to interact with your viewers in Ghana and the world at last. Um Yes, of course, it's really affected us here. Um, you know, it's a um, global problem, so football activities are on hold for now. But um, we are praying for God to help us to come back strongly. And um, um, Joseph, yeah, we can hear you. They said your credit's finished. <laughs> but thankfully, you, you call you call you call ECG. That open the light for you again, eh? Ada. <laughs> Well, while while he tries sorting out his um, his phone issues, um, Priscilla, what has been your routine in the past weeks in terms of um, workouts? What what do you do? Um, as a um, as a player, um, I play to entertain people and to make my fans. Sorry, and, and to make my team win. So my best form is very um, important to me. So I stay home, I train, and send a video to our manager to um, to know what we do at home for now. And um, Richmond, your your daily routine. How how does it look like? Well, we have a group chat. Like the team have a group chat. Like every player is on it. So they send every program that we are supposed to do in the house, and whatever we are supposed to do as individual. Because our lockdown starts from 5 p.m. Monday, so normally in the morning, I go out to the park where there are no, there are not too much people there to just run at least for like 20 minutes or seven kilometers. When I come back home, the team has a program. Then, since I have every uh, machine in my house, treadmill, bicycle, Hello. everything, so most of the times I'm training in the house just to keep myself in shape. Hello. Okay, um, Joseph, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. But can you hear okay. me? Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. So thankfully, please hang in there for us. They said your your credit's finished. That is what no, Richard no. said. That's all credit, Asa. Anyway, I was asking um, Priscilla and also Richmond that how have you been coping with no football activity? Yeah, it's, it's not easy, but like, uh, you know, um, for our team, they give us programs that we have to do in the house. 
So that is what we have been doing now. And like, I think we started training uh, last week, uh, Monday, but it was in the group because of the virus. We don't have to be carried. So that's what happened. Uh, we did training on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. And um, how is your routine like? Yeah, just, you know, stay in the house, not going out, like, uh, you know, staying home, watching movie training in the house and that is all okay let me open let me try to unmute richmond's mic richmond is it is it better no, now okay, okay yeah. so i'll just be when when atama is talking i can't hear anything you can't hear anything um that's that's interesting but we'll just we'll just see how best we can manage it you know technology complain um he was also explaining what um he has been doing his routine that he has been doing um so so far but one question that i also wanted to ask all of you that um joseph you have made donations to two orphanage orphanages that during these um times here in ghana yeah. that is very thoughtful of you yeah yeah you know like um when I was a kid, like um, I used to, to to play football outside, and I see how it is. So uh, I was I was very uh, let me say like I was very into it to to donate this uh, to the orphanage because um, they are the people that like they don't have, and we are the people that we have to take care of them. So I decided to do that by donating to them. Then uh -huh. I can also. And uh, save them from this virus. Okay. Well, we'll let you. Um, Richmond, can you hear him or you still can't hear him? No, I can't hear him. Okay. So, um, just like, what we'll let you do, we'll let you restart your phone because we're having a. You, we could he hear you before. So you can join in again so that your colleagues can hear what you're saying. So we'll, we'll put okay. you off a bit. Then you can All please right. restart your phone and just join us quickly. So, um, Joseph will join us in a bit. But Talk to me about um, Richmond. What you've been doing aside your normal routine? What has been the most difficult part in everything that is happening? Well, I think the most difficult part of all this is like innocent people just died from nowhere. That people that you see them today, people will be talking about them. Them the next day they are gone. And for instance, one of my friends friend who just died like waked up everything was okay went out with their friends came home the next morning couldn't wake up you know so i think this is this is an issue global issue a world issue that for me i'm not taking it lightly because we have one one life and one chance a lot of people may have the the, the privilege to cure themselves because they can afford to take care of one or two bills and uh, most of them too may have these sickness, which may not come from a very privileged homes, which will be very difficult for them to solve it in terms of hospital bills and those things. So uh, for a, a pandemic virus like this to ha happen or to come to this world for now, I think my fear or my my fear for this pandemic is, be is because of the less privileged people who, are, who will not be able to solve these issues because they have very limited resources to use to cure their so sometimes I just sit down and I ask myself, God, if you can take care of this world, at least for this time, if even if we have offended you in any way, we ask of you to forgive us because there are people, when this thing happened, even if you have money, you are gone. You realize there are certain things money cannot solve it, you know. So the only thing that we always pray, for me, for, for me, I always pray that God will intervene because it's not something that the rich or the poor can be exempted. If it happens to you and you are not careful, you are gone. So my fear yeah. for this virus is, is for God to intervene because each and every day as we are training, as we are doing everything, now the training, the football, everything doesn't matter. Human life matters now. So I just I, want yeah. this virus to go as soon as possible so people can get on with their daily day life. And um, Priscilla, you are in Spain. And um, they've been part of the hardest hit countries um, in the world. How how are you coping? Like every time, maybe watching news and what is going on, 
after football, I know you are staying inside, but how, how are you coping? How are you reflecting on all this? Um, well, um, it's not easy for us, but um, this is the moment we found ourselves, so we need to adjust ourselves. Um, it's really crazy world because um, this virus, we don't know where it's, it's coming from. Um, and and um, you cannot see it with your eyes. And if you don't be careful, like, um, it's, it's like, um, I would say it's, it's, it's really dangerous virus. So what I would like to say is, is that we should try to um, take the good um, rules so that the virus cannot be attacked by us because it's very serious and people see us joke, joking, but uh, it's very rare virus. So we should try to avoid that virus too. Okay, and um, what, one question that I wanted to ask you yourself, Priscilla, for those who don't have an idea also how different it is being a professional women's footballer, talk to us about that. Um, well, um, it's not easy for a girl like me um, to travel from, your, travel from afar to, some, um, from, to another place, um, but um, this is uh, this is a situation I find myself. Um, it's, it's very hard, but uh, I think the, um, this is my talent as well. So um, I, I, I need to focus and say things are outside for me because staying alone here, you cook alone. Uh, most of the times I miss my mom because she's the one always cook for me, but I don't have option than I just myself here. So um, playing um, football as a as a female, it's not easy for girls, but you don't have option than doing that. And uh, Joseph, welcome, welcome back. Thank you. I hope that, I hope your ECG is heard. back on. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Joseph, you you play in Turkey. How is the situation like for which one has said now you get to put things in perspective? Even if you're a footballer, you're a normal person, how how is it like for you? Thank you. Yeah, like uh, Richmond said, this is this is not about uh, football. This is not about like you being a business manager or whatever. It's about life, you know. Because uh, the virus is is very serious, and you don't know what is going to happen next. Because uh, it's just attacking people just like that, attacking the poor, the riches. So uh, here, what's like? Like either we get the the cure or this girl get managed by itself because what is going on now is, is very serious and it, the virus has just taken everything from uh, from human and is just telling us what to do, staying home and doing all sort of things that we don't have to do. But this is a situation that we find ourselves, so we just have to cope with it and okay. that everything comes to normal. Richmond. Talk to us about yeah. how you're recovering from your injury that you sustained. Well, I had, a, I had an injury one one and a half month ago, but yeah. I fully recovered last two weeks. Last two weeks, uh, when my result came out, everything was okay. That is where I was able to join the, the team with the training sections and all the videos and all the things that they've been sending in the group. So for now, I'm fit, like the fiddle. I'm ready to play if we are playing today. <laughs> now the body is ready. Just that there is a little bit of there is a little bit of small small weight because after training, the only thing you do is to eat. And I eat. I think I eat conflicts like three times a day <laughs> because watching movie, eating, watching movie, eating after your exercises. So I think that is the only problem we have you now because when we are training on the pitch, that is a different training compared to the ones that we are doing home. You know. And you'll be training, you'll be playing games, so you'll be losing more weight, you'll be burning more fat. But this is where we just do exercises and some small running. Then you come back home and as far as I have guys who can cook Ghanaian food, I can't stop eating. So the belly keeps popping up and going down, popping up. But it's all good. So how are you, how are you going to make sure that it gets, you get into shape again? Because you never know when they'll call on you. That is why I keep eating conflict and not eating a heavy food because conflict <laughs> is very light. So I just stay with these foods that can keep me in shape so that when the time is due, I will have my boots and everything ready. Okay. Now, um, jo Joseph, very important conversation. Um, your loan, 
move to um, faith expert um, on June 30, but you have three more years at your former, your, the club, your, form, your former yeah. club, that is Istanbul, Bakashia. Will you yeah, go back or, <laughs> will you go back or head um, elsewhere? No, no, no. I think uh, after my loan, I, I'll, I will go back and get the club. Oh, okay. But uh, do you have, I uh, think I've been on hold now. Do you have maybe other clubs you're talking to? Yeah, for now, for now, uh, I don't have any clubs that, that are interested in me because uh, because of uh, the league is going on. So maybe after the league, uh, I may say if some uh, teams are interested in me, why not? I have to. Right. But Priscilla, we've spoken about how a life of a professional um, women footballer is. But now talk to me about you signing for um, Club de Clava for three years um, last year. And how has the experience been like in Spain so far? Um, well, um, um, it's, it's, I, I, I just signed for them for one year for now. Because, um, okay. I just signed for one year. Yeah. Yes, it, it, um, it's very excited because um, after my injury, and I got that. Um, that um, I, I I got that. So um, I would say it's, it's, it's a, it, it was very good for me because staying home for long, not playing any um, competitive match, and by God's grace, I got that that team. I was very very so excited. And when I came here to have learned more in it because you know talented people are here. So um, I, I'm always learning from those I met from um, maybe if we have matches and we are playing, I just want those people who are top. So it's making me uh, improving all my levels for now. And I'm um, talking about injury. You, you were out for almost 14 months. Yeah. Talk to us about the recovery process. You also missed out on the World Cup in, um, in France. Like, talk to us about that recovery that is under 20 world cup i must say in france um yeah that one is a lot but um maybe um everything have happened for a reason because um i made the qualify for them i scored yeah. 10 goals but unfortunately i didn't go with them yeah. because of my injury um i was feeling bad but um, at that time, I don't have anything to do than pray for them to go for it. Maybe this is not the right time for me to join them. Maybe the right time to come. Um, and as a lady like me, staying home for 14 months is not easy. You know, ladies are not like men. If you stay away for, uh, like uh, two days prior, you'll be starting growing some um, hate and apathy. <laughs> yes, so coming back, uh, coming back like this, it's not easy. Um, I was I was I was seriously in pain when I was training because I was training and at the same time doing the rehabilitation and it wasn't easy for me but I said to myself that maybe this is my talent so I shouldn't give up so I, I didn't give up and I continue on doing what um will make me get where I was at first. Okay, but how how difficult how challenging I know it was challenging but how challenging was it for you? Because Richmond has spoken to us about his um, injury recovery. But as a woman, how challenging was it for you? And do you, did you think or did you feel that you got enough support? Come again, please. I was asking, as a woman, um, staying home for almost 14 months, how challenging was it for you? And did you feel you got enough support through your injury time? Um, the, the challenge was uh, a lot because um, at that time it was a few people who were um, around me and and um, it was very it was very difficult time for me but um, I was trying my best because coming out from injury is not easy to get where you are so you the person you have to you have to focus what you you, you watch like you used to do. Um, and and as a lady like me, I wanted to give up in some sometimes because um, I remember my friends are going and I'm still at home. But um, I said to myself, everything happened for a reason. So this this is the moment I found myself. So I should try and adjust myself as well. Richmond, your time with Amrol felt very great. How how has it been so far? 
Are, are, you, are you are you are you there? Well, I would say this club is one of the good clubs that I came to, which by God's grace has put in my name on the top level of football because I got the opportunity to play Champions League and Europe, uh, European League. That was all that I was wishing for when I was playing in Atlanta or Juventus or Sassuolo. By God's grace, I had the opportunity to play the Champions League, one Europa League. And I had the opportunity to score as much as many goals. And so far, I think after Ghana, here will, here will be my second home. It's, it's amazing to see how the fans react to you when you go out. And for me, that feeling alone allows me to to, to, to fight more and be determined and to work hard to get to my, my, my destination. And I have to say again, Red Star Brigade has been good to me. They have been like a family to me all this while. So the only thing I can give them back is to score goals as much as I can this year. And um, you're not looking elsewhere anytime soon? Well, my contract ends in uh, December. So I think I have seven, eight months left then my contract ends oh the host yeah. is gone the credit has <laughs> oh is it your mind like okay Ghana <laughs> okay now we see here okay okay so okay 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 I'm going to do light and I use it. No, I'll be on the light. I'm trying to relocate. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, as I was saying, I have seven or my contract ends in December 31st. Yeah. So, by December 31st, either I'll sign or I'll be a free player. I still don't know. But what I know is I have seven, eight month contracts. And I'm just waiting on what the Lord will give me because I've played almost getting to four years in this class. So, if God brings a team that really goes well for me and the club is ready to allow me to go, I would just say I'll be on my way to the next place for another adventure. <laughs> okay. Now, I think because I relocated, people are saying, you are telling people my credit finished. Which one? <laughs> oh, Charlie, do it. I beg you. I beg. People are saying my credit is finished. Anyway, David, um, okay, is asking you, um, which one? He's asking you, has, have you always wanted to play um, in England? What, what's yeah, holding on? Yeah, what, in England. yeah what, what's holding that move? Well, last, last one year, one and a half year, I got the opportunity to go to England. But unfortunately, the deal behind these teams that wanted me, I don't know what happened, but suddenly it didn't go through. So that is what I've been working towards. And I'm, I'm training hard to get to England because I want to play football in England before I end my career. Because I think the way I play and the style of my, my striking abilities, if I get to England, I think we will see the next Samoleto or the next Asamoja or the next Adebayo in, 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 in the making. Because and um, wh which class? Is, yeah. Well, as far as clubs that play premiership between from the first from the first to the, let's say, all the teams in, in England, you cannot choose one because England League is competitive and it doesn't matter you playing West Ham or you playing Newcastle. You can watch a game against, let's say, Norwich against Manchester United and you think it is going to be, oh, just a drive on. But the game finishes and Norwich wins 3-1 against Manchester United. So England, it is a competitive league. So whichever of the teams is ready, I'm ready because the name magic is should not go on waste. That magic has to happen in England, not only rest out in Champions League. <laughs> it needs to happen in England too. But I'm I'm curious to know when um you had things holding the move, which clubs were 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 looking out for you? Is it Arsenal? Well, I had well I had one one was around Brighton, Chelsea, Southampton, West Bromwich. So I was excited because if four good clubs in England is looking for you, then definitely one must go to. Unfortunately, China came in the picture. So either you have to look at you have to look at China or you have to look at England. But as I, I always say, I want to be the Mayweather in football. So I have to just look at my options. So I went to China. 
When is it Mayweather or football? Uh, maybe just if you can help well, us with that. <laughs> well, as I as I always say, we all, we all have we all have passion. We all have passion to play football, you know. It's it's the love that we have already, but sometimes you also need to consider the financial aspects, what is going to help you after football. Because although we are playing football to entertain ourselves and the passion, but the main reason is also to be able to cater for our family and our loved ones. So when our opportunity comes and you make these opportunities and you see the financial the financial asset between the, the two of them, you, you value them and you realize, okay, I think I'm still young. I can go to this place, just make this and come back and just play again in Europe. That is why I went to China. I went because I value the two things. Which one is ready for me to go pay? Is it the financial or is it the game? Then I realized at that time that I was stuck in certain things I need to solve. So I had to go to China at least for six months just to play. I just went there to play first, to play, and secondly, to see how the financial things will go. So that's why one of the reasons why I went to China. After the England deal couldn't go through, I was not looking for any option because I wanted to go to England. So if the England had happened, me, I would have rejected China. But because all the teams in England didn't go through, then I said, okay, then I have a way to go upgrade the level of maybe fin my financial status. So let me go to this country and at least play and just make something on top of what I was in before. That was the reason why I went to China. Okay, um, well noted. But Priscilla, what is lacking in our local women's game? Um, well, um, what I can say is um, we don't have enough uh, equipment for, for the training as, as um, we have it here. But um, I, I think um, Ghanaians, we all uh, believe in our um, natural physical. So um, that's the only thing um, uh, we Ghanaians, uh, we have to try to, um, to, to provide us all these things because I think it's, um, it's the thing that will help us to improve our level. So they should try to, um, to bring the equipment that will help us as we we footballers as a lady as well and also our monies and other things they should try to arrange everything well if you if you say our money they should try to arrange everything well i know there are a lot of complaints when it comes to um how they pay um female players in ghana that it's clearly not the same like they, they pay the men which is understandably um so but i'm hoping that it, it will change going forward how, how do you struggle as as a woman? Talk to us about some of your struggles, especially when it comes to monetary wise. Um, as um like a female, uh, female as a, the person who choose like a player, playing it's not easy for for girls to be a player. Like um um you may be sorry have your parent, but you still push on playing, and you know how things will go with you. And we are not like man. Like um, they can endure many things. So what what I would say is that um, it's not easy for us um, we female playing football. But um, we think um, um, our our leaders our our leaders always see what is inside our inside us. So they they will try and put things others to us for make the um, female team also have its own goals to go. Okay, Joseph. Someone is asking, Nana, Nana Say Banfo is asking. Okay, let me let me pick this question first. Akon Omagon is asking, why didn't you sign for an English club? Why didn't I sign for an English club? English yeah, club. like you know, yeah, no, but you know, but you but you said something earlier on, like you know, because um most of the clubs like want a player but at the end maybe it end up being like maybe the agents or the clubs or like whoever like make the move that is like a uh, one uh, like a uh, bunch of money that like maybe the club doesn't want or the club don't want to accept so it end up bouncing everything but like so far as we are playing football and there's no injury we always hope for the best so for sure inshallah will be there very soon inshallah, but oh. <laughs> Okay, so there's a follow-up question. He's saying, I'm not saying, he's saying, which club do you wish to play in future? 
That for that one there, I cannot say because. <laughs> Um, no, no, we all say we all say Bayern Munich or Real Madrid. We all say Bayern Munich or Real Madrid or Manchester or uh, Liverpool. Or you know, you know. Uh, sometimes what you what you want is not what you get. Sometimes you know. So whatever team that like comes to me in future, why not? If only the financial say like financially is uh, is good and the club is also good, why not? Um, Richmond, there's a question here from EK Menta. So if you're watching us, kindly send us your questions for these gentlemen and the lady. Um, EK Menta is saying, why aren't you getting enough opportunities to play for the Black Stars? What is going on? <laughs> well, most of the time, whenever I'm being called, either I have injury already or the list will come out and the week that I'll play, I'll have an injury. So... It makes it difficult for me to, to to come. And as I said, whenever I'm fit, by God's grace, I'm always being called to come and help my country. But most of the time, for the past one and a half years, I've been having a lot of injuries. After after the last two years, Europa League, and I've been having a lot of injuries of late. If I'm not having any injury, by God's grace, I'm always being called. So I think this year, I'm working towards that not to have these injuries so that I can be ready and fit to, to, to be in the li lineup so that I can help my country to go for it. As my predecessors did, as Samuel Jan made it, Tony Elba, I'm also working towards everything just to stay fit, so not to get these injuries again. Why, why, why is this so, like, anytime maybe they have to call you to the Black Star, is it that you're injured? Or wh why is this so? <laughs> I'm curious. Well, it's only got... <laughs> it's only God who can who can who can explain this, you know, because what I believe is sometimes, sometimes because I play, because I we play qualify for Champions League, and after the qualify for Champions League, we have a league and we have cup games, and because my team really needs me, so most of the games that are very are always coming up, I have to play. So in a season, I can play, let's say, instead of maybe thirty six games, I can play more than forty games. So. Before all these games and everything, you don't get enough rest because some of the games are Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday. So before the color lace will come, and maybe I have a slight injury and it doesn't allow me to play the next weekend. So when they find out, they have to ask me. And I can't lie about my injury because this is what I feed on. This is what my family is feeling. So I will just be honest and tell them I have an injury. But I think I don't know, I'm not going to say somebody has done this or this and that. I believe it's part of football. I accept it the way it is. I believe in God. I don't believe in these. Whatever we believe becomes a fear, and it and it will be, it will be existed. When you believe something, it becomes a mark on you. I don't believe whatever people may think or people say. I believe my injury is my injury, because if I'm saying okay, somebody is behind the scene working against it, the person could have done it the day I was born. Because when I was born, I was very young. You could have attacked me. Not now that I'm born. That. The grace of God is taking me far. I don't believe in these things. So I think so it's you, a natural injury. So you've never faked injury not to um, play for the Black Stars, but to help your club? You've never faked injury? Me, no. Me, I like Ghana. Me, I like Ghana rough. Because after you finish playing the game, you have some half day that you can eat rice balls with Ghana soup from your mom's pot. That is that is one of the good things because here we can't cook it. I mean, I can't cook garlic soup; it will turn into something else. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's one of the reasons why I love to come to Ghana. At least after playing for my national team, it will be so nice to eat in my mother's pot. So I will never fake an injury. Okay, so we'll we'll come back to you. I have um two two more three more questions for you from um David Kofite. Um, still on the Black Stars, but let me go to Prince Bella. Do you aim at winning the African Women's Best Player in the future? I can I'm, ask, I'm asking you, do you aim to win the African Best um, Women's Player of the Year in the future? We've seen Oswala winning that. We've seen a um, lot of women, the women also doing that. Haklana did it um, last few years. Are you hoping? to maybe one day win the women's um, best player? 
yeah for sure yeah I'm, I'm hoping i'm hoping for that yeah and that's my aim that's the only aim i have in in like i have it even like for sure and for and others and 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 how are you working towards that yeah um i take my training seriously um i i normally i listen to the coaches what they want me to do and as a player um any uh, anything you're doing you have to set a target so that you can reach there so that's my target and i i always push in to get that we're, we're hoping we're hoping that you get but when you watch these players you watch oshwala you watch um Tembe Hatlana, you watch our very own or you watched in the past you've seen a job play You've seen lots of these ladies playing and your colleagues as well. When you watch them, um, what, what are some of the things that you pick from them? Um, normally, um, for Shala, I guess, um, the way she has the speed and anytime she got bored, she should not get back. She she rather go for it. So normally, I, I used to watch her, her videos, how she scored, um, like the way she was scoring here. And you see, um, this is my first team, um, come uh, like getting this type of Europe team here. So I think yeah. as time goes on, people will hear my name like Oshola because you, you cannot come to some place for um, just one year and you start to shine, you see. But uh, in God, grace, everything will be all right very soon. Even your debut, your, your debut game, you scored a brace, so we know that everything will be when you when you played your first game, you scored a brace. So we know that everything, everything, everything will definitely be fine soon. But um, Joseph, we're talking about Black Stars issues. Red One has touched on a few, and um, there's a question here asking. There were there was a comment or the comment made this week that um, politicians or politics plays a part in our Black Star setup. How the Black Stars are handled. You have been with the team for, for a while, not too, not too long. Why do you think we are not we are not doing anything great? I mean, the Black Stars. Why do you think? What 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 seems to be the problem? Uh, well, I would say there is there is no problem, or the, I would say like uh, maybe this is the main reason why we are not moving forward or we are not doing things right. You know uh, what I would say is uh, is football and football. So many things happen, and us like people are trying to say that like there is a policy in uh, like in Ghana football. I don't think that like there is a certain like that because we all come from different places. Like we all come from different teams, from different like uh, homes, and we come together to play as, uh, for the national team. So there we have to come together, fight for the nation. So I don't think that like. Uh, policy like it's working there because if certain is working there i don't think uh, we will play or or the, the Ghana name if we will go far to that extent you know so what people are saying i don't like i've never said certain in the in the team before because uh, that is not part of uh, we and uh, football players that is not part of us maybe it will be something uh, uh, outside football uh, within the football i don't think we have written like that. But don't you, don't you think um, the players should take more responsibility for their team or for the country not being able to win the Africa Cup of Nations for so many years? Yeah, you know, that's, that's what we're doing. You know, <laughs> Rashawn, I'll pick your thoughts on that as well. You know, that is, that is, that is, the, uh, that is like, uh, that is uh, all the players wish to, to, to play for the nation and win uh, the African Cup, you know. I wish to play for my uh, country and, and win the nation, like uh, the African Cup of Nations. So that is the motive all the players have in mind. So... Are you sure? Nothing. Yeah, yeah, seriously. If, if Wachi may, 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 may bear me, like, uh, in mind, you can, you can ask him also. That is what we have because whenever we come together, we all are like all we we'll thinking is just like we have to fight, do everything possible to, to just take the cup home. That is the only thing that we have in mind. At that moment, we don't we are not thinking about even our say we are thinking about how to, to get there and get a trophy to Ghana. We don't even think about like what we are going to eat the next day or like what we are going to do after uh, maybe after the game or whatever. All what we are thinking about is 
how are you going to get it to the final and just win the cup and bring it home? That is but yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know, I know you definitely think about the bonus, but anyway, which one? <laughs> no, I know, but like, you know, bonus, yeah, we think about the bonus, but like, first thing first, you know, when you have this, uh, when you have the cup, like, it's different uh, feeling, you know, a different vibe. Exactly. Yeah, so when you have the, like, when you win the cup, the bonus, of, of course, the bonus will come by eight seconds, even it's going to be double. So that one is... We are not giving double bonus to Black Stars. We'd rather give it to women's football. Sorry. I think the bonus self is not really the problem. Uh, we played football in Ghana, barefoot, without people giving us money, but we, we, we yeah. love it. So to, to just participate for your nation and the country is one of the greatest. And we can play some games and they can decide not to give us money. That's not the main reason why we come. But concerning the African Cup, what I think is, there was a reign of a king, Noah, uh, Hezekiah, and there was a reign of David. When David came on, his reign lasted for so many years. So maybe we may be having difficulties in taking the African Cup, but the day that we take the African Cup, maybe it will continue for six, seven years in a row. So all that I want Ghanaians to know is they should support us in prayers. They should believe in the team that they put up. And I believe strongly that the day that chain will be broken, it will continue. And who knows, it may be winning the African Cup and going for the finals in the World Cup. Oh, we are, we are, we if, are hoping that. <laughs> if, 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 yesterday, if yesterday was not good, our tomorrow may be better. You don't know what lies in tomorrow. The only thing we have to believe in, we have to believe in a team. And the team is not for one person, it's for the whole Ghanaians. So if that 23 players represent them on the field, but when we are playing, it is the whole 30 million people playing on the pitch. So I believe the African Cup will come to Ghana, but when it comes, it will continue maybe for four years consecutive. Okay. That is and, what I believe. And Richard, you think you players or the players of the senior national team, you think you don't play for money? It's, because that has been that has been the, that has been the image for a very long time. For in, for instance, I always say if it is for money, let's take somebody as someone who was making millions. And when someone comes and he plays one game and you tell someone, okay, when you win, I'll give you 10,000. Someone's first option is not about the money because he already he already has the name Baby Jet. If you call me and I come, I already, I'm already playing and making it every month. So why would I focus on the money? If I score in the national team and play good and I come home, the, the reception... Even at the airport, for somebody to say, oh, look at what she had done. That, for me alone, is, it's like my mother would say, Dimpa Echa Hunyadie. So that name that people will humbly call you with respect is, is one, of the most, one of the most greatest achievements. Though, it's, uh, when we work, we are supposed to be paid. That is how it has started through the generations of Tony Eboy and everybody. So when we play, it is not the main issue is about the money. Our issue is not about the money. Our issue is how to make Ghana proud. For instance, I can be playing and somebody say, oh, do you know I play with Mike Lacey? And I said, oh, yeah. He said, he was one of the biggest players I ever played with. I feel proud. So I want to leave a legacy like that. So when I come to my master, the first option is not about the money. It's about what I can do to also be recognized in Africa. And when I get to Togo for maybe a business, somebody says, oh, do you know this guy? He used to play in this club. That is the feeling we footballers want to have. It's not about the money. So... You know, football has been like it's been like a party. It's like being like a little bit of politics. Like people, when somebody likes a player or a generation, they'll say, oh, this generation, because they won this cup, oh, they were fantastic. They were, but those who won the African Cup for maybe three, four, three or four times, they were paid bonuses. But because they were able to bring the cup, it is forgotten that they took bonuses. But because you are not able to bring the cup, when bonuses are being paid, maybe they think, oh, their mind is only about the boys. But that is not it. The passion for the country is first. For me, that's what I know. Because if you come to our training ground in the national team, you see players fighting and getting angry after losing a training game. For instance, Achu, you know Achu. Achu never likes to lose. Uh -huh. Nobody likes to lose. Because if I lose... I come to my room. I tell my intentionally come to the room and you like, hey Charlie, today they will dealt with your group, Papa. And as a footballer, that feeling I don't want to have it. So it is not about the money; it is about winning. 
Is, is it the same for you, um, Joseph? Yeah, yeah, the same thing, you know. It's, it's not about the money. It's like, it's about the, the ball itself, you know. The feeling and, like, you playing for people to recognize you, for people to see that, yeah, this is the guy who made it. Uh, this is the guy, like, you know, going to places and you just point finger on you and say that, yeah, this is uh, Joseph Akama who played for the national team. He played in this year, blah, 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 blah. And he's making it great, you know. It's not about the money. The money comes by itself, you know. When you make it, you by all means end it, you know. So we all fight for, like, for the nation and uh, we try to make it good for the nation. So it's not about the money per se. Like what you have said, it's from generation, you know, because uh, some people have been, like, playing and they've been... It's the same time paying because that is our job. When we work, we have to pay, like, we have to end money at the end. So it's not about, like, because of the money, so we are just coming to play. No, it's about, a, you know, the passion of football that we have and for the nation. So that is it. Okay, um, but um, Priscilla, now talk to us about why are we now struggling in a way to qualify for Women's World Cup? I'm talking about Black Queens. What is going on in the team? Well, um, um, I, I, I would say it's, um, it's a season like what my my, uh, my brother said, because um, uh, everything have, has a, its own reason for um, at, the, at, the, at that particular moment. And I was not, I, I will not say my sisters was not um, able to um, 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 give out their best. They were trying they were trying day in day out to give but unfortunately things didn't work out for them but i think next time we get this chance um we, we will really we will use it um nicely so i don't think it's a problem anymore for them okay but you, you play for ampim dakwa and uh, also yes. you see how the women's football aside general women's football but the women's league how, how do you see the the quality um well um as uh, as you know in in ghana like um club side uh, we, they don't pay us um it's, it's very difficult for we lady to adjust ourselves into it and for example from where we train most of the time if um, our driver is not around people walk so me myself say um, I, I like i have motor i have car, so i'll rather ask those people who, who want to join me or who want to go at the time I want to go, maybe let's go on something like that. It's very difficult for us, but um, um, I think my, my, my colleagues are trying their best to become um, who I am today. Richmond and um, Atama, do you two have any plans together with your team to, in a way, try and um, maybe in a form of a campaign, also try to support women's football in the country? You can you can hear what um, Priscilla is talking about. Clearly, the the hardships that they are, they are, they are going through when it comes to women's football. Do you think about it all? For you, is just about you know the men's football, black stars, or maybe the other youth um, national teams? No, I think I think the women's football they all form part of our country. You cannot take one sport outside of anything. Even those who run, those who play table tennis, those who are doing javelin. It is, it is how the members of the committee will just sit down and arrange these things. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not a master of it. I'm, I'm not... I don't have any educational skills when it comes to these exactly. things. That's why there is a body. That is why there is a body called the GAP, Ghana Football Association. Yeah. So I think these questions for us players to answer will be very difficult. I think they are in the right position to answer this question. Ours is just be on the field and just give our <laughs> best as footballers. Because no, but, uh, we don't want to see... I find too happy. Have you ever given your thoughts? When, when, it comes to, when it comes to answering these questions, you have to be very careful with whatever you are going to say. Because if you make a mistake and you say something the next morning, it is hitting every place right. that... This guy said this, 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 and this. I don't want to have a problem with the women, <laughs> neither those who throw javelin. So I'd rather allow the okay. GFA to answer this question. Talk, talking about GFA, what are your expectations for the new GFA led by Peter Kweku? What are your expectations? How you want to see the overview or the overlook of Ghana football? 
Well, for me, I think even all these times when Man City was there, we always gave our best. Now we have a new body in the GFA. And let's see what they also bring on board. And because we all know Ghana, Ghana has been one of the most successful countries when it comes to football. So whatever the body of GFA is bringing on board this time, the players are also ready to go with whatever they propose. Because I really want to finish playing for the national team and to be part of oh, those who won the African Cup 20, maybe 22 or something. So whatever the body of GFA now is bringing on board, with the players are ready to go with it so that we can, we can be able to help them so that they can also help us so it can be togetherness because I believe when you work together, there is always a good result that comes out. But do, do you have any maybe plans in mind or some things that you feel that they can they can do or they can look at? Well, for me, as I always say, <laughs> that is their job. Yes, <laughs> that is that is that. Yeah, that is your job. Yeah, that is your job. Me, mine okay. is just to be on the field, just to deliver. Okay, Atama, let me let me hear from you. What are your expectations for the? Yeah, for you know, the, like what, what, uh, no, don't what ask like Richmond. Don't say that is no, your no, job. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like uh, what Bashi said. Uh, we like all what we have to do is just have to support them, you know, because uh, they need our support, they need my next support, and they need we the players also our support. If we are not there, they are not there. If they are not there, we also are not there. And if the GFA is not there, Ghana also are not there. So all what we have to do, we have to come together and help each other so that we achieve our aim. That is all, you know. And most of the like uh, the work depends on them because we the players, we uh, will be invited to come and play football for the nation. So they know the best. They know the right thing to do. They know the players that they have to call. They know the things that you have to put together for we the players to come and play. So everything is it's it's on their page now so they have to okay. uh, take it serious and okay. work it. For me for me for instance you see Adibia played and scored ten goals. If 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 I'm supposed to build something and I see a young girl who is able to make this mark, I'm going to take this young lady, attach him to one of the old senior players, groom this girl Make sure that every time maybe I'm calling, this girl is around. Even if he has the opportunity to play 20 minutes, I know he has the talent, the ability to make it. For instance, we had Tony Eboa. We had a lot of strikers. We had a lot of midfielders. But after all these players are gone, who are we looking up to the next? Who is still in the line? That, okay, when the senior player is out, this guy has been there. He's been learning from the senior player. I'm pushing him there. You know, I, I may not... I may, I may, I, they should forgive me if I say anything that really gets, I don't want my message to get to anybody as an offense or anything. But what I believe is, I know maybe, let's say, my Glacian played. Okay, I saw Atama coming to the national team four or five times. This guy has the quality and the ability to control the midfield, maybe with Wakasu, with Thomas Party. Okay, let me groom these four or five guys. Every single day I'm calling this, this team, I have these four guys there. And I'm attaching these two young stars that I know, and I'm grooming them. So when these senior players are going, I have another two guys whom I've groomed them. They've learned from the senior players. Then I'm pushing them there. For instance, now let's say if Asamoah is gone, we have I have I have my brother Jordan. Maybe me myself I'll be there. Which are the rest of which are the rest of the strikers? Maybe fine. You bring my brother Roy, but you always have to have at least four people around who are competing and who are young. And you know, I'm building these four guys because I know the time they can deliver. Regardless of if God that if anything happens to them or there is no injury, you know, oh, I have these four or five people. Okay, these four guys I'm building. When a player comes up who has a new talent and you 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 get to know him, and everybody keeps talking about him. You bring this player and you attach these these players, and they've been doing it each and every day. For instance, I was picked. I was picked because Siapia saw me in Sassuolo and gave me the opportunity. At that time, I was like eighteen or nineteen. 
if this coach or the GFA or the did not give me the opportunity, nobody would have known me. Because when I came, I saw Samoyedan to be that one of the players that I want to leave up because I was very young. So I was like, hey God, how am I going to play this? And our first game against China, and unfortunately, when I went inside, I got the opportunity to score, which made it one match. So to see somebody like Samoyedan in the national team and you being called as a young player, you want to also give your best. So I think these are things that they should keep doing so that everybody will keep on his best performance. Because if you keep calling, if it's somebody who is eight, 17 years, 18 years, and he can play the national team, call him. Because he's making, he's playing, and he's delivering. It is not about the age. It's about what the boy or what the player can deliver on the pitch. This is, this is, this has always been something that I've liked and I've always wanted and I've always admired from the national team. So sometimes people say it's politics. It's not politics. It's not politics. Those who are who are giving their best. For instance, the season will finish and the player will score 32 goals. And you tell me they call the player. So it is wrong. It is not wrong. He scored. So I think it has been both from the GFA and the Blasters always working together. So I don't I don't see anything different that people okay. may think so that you add it to it. I believe the African Cup will come this year. You mark my ways. This year we will bring the African Cup. Why? That, that, is, that is next feeling. year. That is twenty twenty one. We are supposed to play the African Cup. Yes. Okay. You want to bet? You will bet on me. You you will bet on me. <laughs> you can bet on it. Okay, so you are you are on the why? Why we are going to bring the African Cup? You said. You are on the why. You said we are going to bring the African Cup. So you are going to say why you think we are going to bring the African Cup? Well, I think, I think. There is always a time and a season. Even a player, when you are coming to play a game, Atama will be a witness. Sometimes you have a feeling that this game, Charlie, today I will give it to this guy. <laughs> and for the past years, I'm having this feeling that any time we get to the national team again for African Cup, we are bringing the cup home. And it has been on me for for some months now. I don't know why I'm having this feeling. I don't know. Maybe I'm not the only player. As the last time I talked with Wakaus, Wakaus also said the same thing. He said, Charlie. I have a feeling this time you'll bring it home. But you, you, I, always, I I be, <laughs> you always go close, you know, the black stars, you always go close and you don't bring it home. So what makes a difference? This time is this time is not close because this time there's an anointing and a grace falling from heaven that all of us will tap into it and we'll bring the cup home. Do you want to be a pastor after football? Well, we don't carry that mantle, but if Jehovah releases it, we are ready to accept it. <laughs> Akama, are you guys bringing the Africa Cup of Nations hopefully next year? Yeah, why not? Like, uh, what she said, you know, sometimes it's about like how you feel it, you know, because I do normally talk to Bashi and he always tell me this, like, you know, when it's time for us to, to bring it to you, you just feel it by yourself. Like, when you're sitting, like, or when you're talking to someone, you just feel it like, no, this is this is our time. This is the time that something has, uh, something has to happen, you know. So I, I believe strongly that like next year, inshallah, we will bring it. Hey, by who could this year before write our name in this too? <laughs> and um, I have a question here saying that um Richmond, you, you should have been a bigger star by now. This is coming from um Nawaz. He's saying you should he he has a feeling you should have been a bigger star by now. What do you make of such comments when you hear things like that? Well, I agree with him, but I agree with him. It's one of the most beautiful things some uh, a fan will tell about you. But as I said, I have I was from 2018, I was going and going and going. So I believe I was getting to the highest level until I had one of the biggest injuries that knocked me that's my knee, knocked me out for like two two months. And I, I was having issues in recovering, so I had to fly to Ghana to treat it. So as as he said, okay. he should be ready to watch it. When the league starts, he should, he should watch another Boache Magic because this time we are garnishing everything and we are bringing a different a different <laughs> style of scoring and a different way of playing. So I think this year will be dope. We're just, we're just about wrapping up. And um, Priscilla, so um, how do you think football is going to change after all this pandemic is over? 
I'm looking forward to a lot of um, changes in football globally and with respect to spectators and some football rules on the food to play as well. Because uh, I know for sure football will band back strongly, so um, I think people are going to enjoy it. And um, Atoma, how, how do you think this is going to change football? Or you think it's going to be the same? Oh, Atama has has gone off again for us. <laughs> e e e C G. <laughs> He's gone off again. We can't hear his song. We don't hear you. We don't hear you. <laughs> let's let's take him off for, for a while. I think he would go. So finally, which one? How do you think um is going to change football? Or we'll still have football back as 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 it was. Well. I think it will. I think there will be love. There will be love more now in football because it's this. This pandemic is very, very serious, and I feel bad. But it will also help people to love one another. It will. It will bring the fair play. It makes fair play very, very interesting because you will know that whatever happens, life is just life can just get out of you just within an instant. So yeah. I think it's going to make people love each other so much on the field of play that there will be no fighting or. Excuse my word, no racism or something. Because this thing has shown us we need to come together as one. It doesn't, okay. it doesn't matter if you are from Africa, you are from Asia, you are from Europe. It can take anybody. So I think when we get back to football, it will be amazing. There will be a different new players, young stars who will be bringing new things. So I'm ready to mingle and <laughs> dazzle in this football affair when it starts. Okay, and uh, Atama, if you can hear us, um, do you think yeah, football will... Oh, finally. If, do you think you have the final word? Do you think football will be the same when it returns? Yeah, like I uh, about to say earlier, you know, it's, it's going to be a different thing altogether because uh, people has really made a lot in football uh, while this world is going on because uh, they've made a lot in the, the Champions League, the Europa League, and their league is a... Because uh, what is going on now is many people just come down to a thing that like they didn't have nothing to do and this is a time for like a lot of players that is, uh, people actually don't know them are like are working okay. indoor and it's like people are every time like ready to surprise people when the league uh, started. So I think okay. it's gonna be a great feeling and like people will really enjoy football more than before. All right, I think um okay. right one one. Which one to really hear you, right? Ah, Shatale White. That's a black guy. 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 So thank you guys. Thank you, Richmond, for doing this with us. Thank you okay. so much for, for taking time off idea. your schedule to do this with us. Atama, thank you very much. But please buy credits, you know, buy credits. Adomia, <laughs> <laughs> we talk some other time, eh? Adomia, thank you very thank much you for your time as well. And for everyone who okay. sent in messages, please thank you very much. So we'll definitely have um, a chat sometime soon, but please take good care of yourself. Make sure right. you're washing your hands. Make sure you're social distancing. And let's let's get through this together. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Thank you very much. God Thank bless you. you. Have a wonderful day. Okay, so um, Atama will be waiting for the money for the credit. Forget about Bashi. 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 Okay. 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 Okay, Charlie, guys. Yeah. Okay, bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Good night. <laughs>